life is a bowl of soggy cardboard that you got to eat one bowl a day. And you could choose not to eat that bowl of soggy cardboard today. That's totally cool. But it means tomorrow you got to eat two bowls of soggy cardboard. So if you just chip away at that soggy cardboard, eat your bowl, get it done, then you're good to go. You start putting that shit off. It's not going to turn out yeah, good. A bunch of bowls it made more sense when I said it back then. No, you should write a book on this, I think. No, I mean, it, soggy card- it still it, sounds it's it's printed printed on one, cardboard. Chapter one, soggy cardboard. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. That is the opener right there, I think. <laughs> no, but what do we do to poor Ryan, dude? Ryan, yeah, we spent all day yesterday in the Redwoods. They were chasing me around with cameras, shooting the new 11 tack jacket colors. Woo. Um, and then we came back from a long film session, plugged boards in, <clears throat> grabbed other boards, Rode those boards around Santa Cruz. Tried to catch Tyler surfing at the beach. Didn't make it in time. Caught him walking back, though. It was kind of funny. Then we rode all over and then came back to the crib, ate, grabbed our boards, went on another full ride, got back from that ride at, like, 9, loaded up all our stuff into the truck, and then Ryan drove all of us back from Santa Cruz back to SAC. Because so I was, was going to like start. Midnight. No, we didn't get home until, like, 1. Ugh. I was going to start the drive, and I pulled up to the gas station. I was like, all right, boys, I'm going to get some some uh, caffeinated liquids. Who wants some? And Ryan's like, I'll just I can just drive us all home. And I was like, you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> say fewer things, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, so Ryan's, Ryan's a little tired. I'm a little tired, but we carry on. We push through. We power through, baby. Ryan's got it. I mean, speaking of travel, we got Badger traveling in here. From Robert Allen's here. Yo, yo. Ohio, baby. Midwest. How's the weather out there right now? It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> Perfect timing for me to get out here. Yeah, we had some wild stuff happen in the Midwest the last, like, two weeks. We had Windman Enduro, and then you had something out with Ori, right? What was that all about? Ori's got his own private trails now. I yeah. saw that. For those of you guys who don't know, this what? is Ori Rush, uh, co-owner of Flight Fins. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they got a go musician. On there. It's going to be a destination for sure. How much land does he have to work with over there? Um, it's quite a few acres. Yeah, right next to his house. Quite a few acres. That's so yeah, sick. Just straight I up saw bought the jump raw line. land, right? Yeah, it's just forest. Just straight bought forest. Bought a chunk of forest. Let me There's get this forest right here. Yeah, he just took took the uh, tools out and got started with the trails. That's badass. Because I saw those videos of him. He posted something saying, "Yo, jump line's getting real nice." And then I watched, he did a whole like 360 camera video riding through it. And I was yeah. like, it just kept going. Yeah. And I was like, yo, the, where is this? And then you kind of look around and then you're like, what? So that's cool to know that that's his property he's developing. He's making a trail system yep. over there. Right out of his house, you ride right over to it. <laughs> all the tra- yeah, he's been kind of hard to get a hold of lately. I'm like, what's going on with Ori? And then we go down there and it's like, bro. You built the whole trail system. What have system. you done? <laughs> That's too good. He's been rocking a McLeod out there, just cutting trails. Is he cutting them all by hand, or does he have machinery out there? Uh, yes, some machinery, but, I mean, kind of the best tool is a shovel. Yeah, yeah. Flathead shovel will build pretty much anything. The main, the go-to, you said it, McLeod. McLeod, baby. That's Ooh. where it's at. You know about these? McLeod? Oh, McLeods are sick, dude. So it's a trail building tool, and it's got a couple sides on. Basically, it's got a big tamper that you can tamp down, pack stuff down. One side is just like a straight blade that you can use, kind of like a flathead shovel, just cut. And then the other side's a rake. Wait, this is like a hand tool? It's a hand tool, yeah. And so you can like pull off like life layer and grass and like roots and rocks out of your dirt, and then you can shape your dirt around, and then you can tamp it down with the the end of the the tool. Yeah, plus they're usually bright yellow, so they're pretty sweet. Yeah, and they're yellow. But Seeking Shred gave me a bright pink one stop it dude i'm not even kidding bro i pulled up to our trail building weekend up at yeti land manuel soto pulls up with a whole bunch of tools and he walks out around the truck with a fluorescent pink mcleod you got blessed blessed bro <laughs> super blessed we've got a pretty cool little private trail zone getting unlocked in in this area jeff's got his ranch but we've got some stuff in the works with a really really cool dude um, up in like the Angels Camp area where he's got a private skate park and a private pool and he's putting together the most legendary festival grounds event center ever. And we went up and uh, kicked it with him and he cut a bunch of the the mountain around and we shaped up a, a bunch of features around the zone. So <clears throat> uh, we're working on, I think we're talking about uh, March doing a freestyle event out there. 
doing like the first float life freestyle event focused on tricks and freestyle. And don't, massive. Don't let the cat gaps. out of the bag yet, man. Is this is this like the official announcement? <laughs> I mean, I guess, yeah. Are you just saying it so that you have to do it? Is this kind of like the manifesting thing? Like if you say it out loud, you have to do it? No, it's 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 the ball's rolling further than that at this point. It's I think we can let people know. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So basically you're saying Sacramento is about to be popping. Yeah, but Ori's trails. Stuff. I, I, I didn't mean to like poop on Ori's trails. It just reminded me that we got some <laughs> private trails going on around here. Does Ori plan on doing any kind of like training sessions or like events or anything? over? Has he talked to any like dreams or stuff at the property? Well, I can't really like speak exactly you know, for his like, plans, you but uh, he's, yeah, no, he's got some, some big ideas for That's it. That's sick. Yeah. That's sick. We got, me, uh, we uh, Midwesterners got to kind of stick together, you know? Yeah, of course. Of course. Hey, I mean, I think the whole one wheel community has got to stick together. It's like we're all here progressing this thing, unlocking zones. It's like you look at skateboarding and snowboarding and bicycling. There's tons and tons of resorts and areas and like a lot of like really established stuff and a lot of established parts of like the culture itself. And um, I think one one wheeling, we're all here like growing this thing together, part of this thing together. We're all very aware that it's in its early stages. So like. I definitely think we we all can be here to help each other grow each other's zones. Like I'm going out to the East Coast to Raleigh to help the Oak City homies with their build weekend because their property oh, out Oak there City, is dude. coming along really sweet. Because yeah. um, that's a similar space where they through their event there and the the owner of the property. It's an old plantation. There's tons of acreage and lots of like open zone. And the property owner there was super cool about their first event and then loved all the one wheels and was like, yes, build whatever you want here. Like, let's go keep building. And that's that's pretty much the same thing that happened at Blue Mountain Event Center up here where Shred Fest is held. Right. So you can Shred Fest. They developed a couple trails for the event. The event was held and the event owners were like, oh, my God, this is awesome. Keep coming back. Build whatever the hell you want. Which was hilarious because right when we showed up there the first time, they're like, oh, don't don't ride those things on the grass. And, oh, we need to keep them over <laughs> here. What's going on? And they were just being so weird about everything. And then after a little bit, after that first weekend, they're like, yeah, what can we build you? How can we make this sick? Yeah. It's cool, man. It's like the Kohler Bike Preserve wasn't Kohler until they built all the trails, named all the trails, put the signs up you know, put, built the gazebos and the huts and stuff. And I, I feel like it's so exciting seeing Ori's, Ori's zone unlock and the, the the zone in Raleigh getting unlocked more. And Jeff's ranch is going to be a zone that we're going to be unlocking. And Blue Mountain Event Center is unlocking. And there's Charlie. Float, Float Valley. <clears throat> don't forget about Float Valley. They got all built out. Float Valley. What's Float Valley? What? You guys don't know about Float you got Valley? A valley too? No, that's nowhere near here. Float Valley. About a ranch and a valley? No, 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 no. That's back. That's back on the East Coast. Where is that? Is that Tennessee? Is it somewhere like that? Do you guys have no idea what I'm talking about? Uh, oh, oh, wait. No man. clue. The that guy that, that went that to a city. His own. And, yeah, and he was like, hey, the fire department has all this land right next to the firehouse. Can I just start building on it? And the city was like, yeah, go for it. And he built like the sickest course. What? Do you guys not know about this? No, no, dude. I think I know what you're talking about. We need it's like a like we need like a, a, a one wheel. I don't Map. know. I've never been. I know Austin went. He said it was super fun. Austin wrote it. Austin wrote it. A bunch of folks have wrote it. They said it was sick. What we'll, What we'll do? Here's what we'll do. We'll throw the video of Flow Valley up on the wall right here, hey. right now, and it'll be playing, and then everyone will know what it is, and we'll link to the video down in the description. Done. Well, yeah, man. It's all the zones are unlocking, and <clears throat> next thing you know, there's going to be people riding. There's gonna. There's got to be. Okay, this gets me into something. Rope toes. Do you think rope toes are going to be, like, a good, useful thing for one-wheel mountains and, like, trails and stuff? Because <clears throat> you don't necessarily need a whole chairlift to get up the hill, but you need – you can't go up super steep zones. But with, like, a rope toe, I feel like you could <sighs> unlock, like, whole steep areas of mountains that would, like, resurface you. Okay, so here's the thing about that. I don't know if the cost of a rope toe justifies the extra vertical that you'd be able to climb by having a rope toe. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, yeah. chairlift, you can go over whatever. It doesn't matter what's below you. It could literally be a glacier. It doesn't matter. But rope toe, it's only going to give you, like, if you got something extra to hold on to, it's only going to give you a little bit of extra. And it's still got to be, be fairly terrain. smooth. It's got to be yeah. rideable. Yeah, that makes and sense. And rope toes aren't cheap. 
So because no. we're talking about to answer your question, no. <laughs> no, I don't think that's gonna happen. We were talking about uh, Manuel and I were chatting about the possibility of rope toes in certain areas because, like, our mission at Yetis was to unlock the bottom of the hill so that you could stay on your board all the way around and just lap the whole thing because you had to walk like a little zone. And we were standing there and we're like, dude, Manuel's like fucking rope toe, bro, like a terrain park right here, boom to boom. Um, and it got my mind thinking. I don't know any of you, any of you folks out there building your your zones. Maybe you might need a rope toe your spot. Maybe it makes sense at your spot. But I'm excited to see it because I think that these properties and these zones are what's going to unlock more tricks and really unlock, like, the heavier freestyle aspect of One Million because, like, the the movie or the film Dirt that Aaron Hooper tried to put together where we were hitting the handrails in the woods, like, that's kind of a like the direction that we got to go to really do – bigger tricks and more tricks and like be able to unlock like bigger terrain and pop spins off of stuff and pop onto slides and <clears throat> find the versatility and find the features that work best with the one wheel. Like we're not going to find those in the mountain bike parks where everything's made for mountain bikes or in the skate parks, where everything's made for skateboards. We can find certain things there, but once we start making these parks for one wheels, I think is when like, at least the freestyle aspect is going to get unlocked. And then the training possibilities for all the racers and riders is going to be pretty nuts with all these zones. That makes sense. Plus your boards break a whole lot less when they're on dirt instead yep. of concrete because yeah. skate parks just destroy boards. Yep. Plus, you know, skaters usually not super happy when you're in the skate park on a one wheel. <laughs> yeah. a bit frowned upon. <laughs> but yeah, I'm with you. Do you. Now, do you think it'll be similar to um, like how – midwest and east coast rope toe scenes the kids get like so sick at rails just like insanely good at rails so that if you can session something like that it'll like sort of make that freestyle aspect shape the culture that way sort of like how you know back in the day with skateboarding there was a west coast style and then there was like everyone else and like skateboarding or snowboarding there's like an east coast style of riding and there's a west coast style of riding and depending on where you're from everyone rides a little different and a lot of times you can tell like where people are from like you can tell the midwest rope toe kids in a heartbeat when you see them snowboard you're like oh that kid did nothing but session rails on ice all day mm. for sure versus someone who rides like a lot surfier more flowy like a west coast person who has a chance to ride powder a lot backcountry that kind of stuff so I don't know. That'll be interesting to see one wheel go that direction where it's like you've got the people that ride in this area have a totally different style than the people that ride in this other area. So mm -hmm. that'll be that'll be cool. Kind of like, you know, Jimmy Chang mentioned that on One Wheel's podcast, actually, when he was asking them about third party accessories and stuff. And they're like, oh, no. And then uh, he was saying, well, you know, some people aren't in California. You know what I'm saying? Like they might live in a place where it rains all the time. So maybe waterproofing is a lot more important to them than other people like us. We live in California. It never rains here. Waterproofing is not really that important to us because if it rains once every hundred days, we just don't ride that day. Right. Whereas someone who lives in Oregon or, you know, you're in the Midwest. Ohio. Ohio. All the time. <laughs> it might be more important, right? Right. So I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. You know about waterproofing your boards, right? Yeah, a little bit. You're the little DIY garage work, you know? Yeah, we never even introduced Robert for the people who don't know who Robert is if you didn't get the, the logo right here. This is our collab logo, the Flying Badger. Yeah, that's your Flight Fins collab logo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sick. So, yeah, yeah Robert, Ori Rush made this logo. It's a sick logo, man. Ori's a talented guy. I feel like this is just be the Ori podcast. This is, this we is the We Love Ori show. Talk about Ori the whole time, <laughs> how awesome he is. Yeah, Ori, he's Ori. actually, he's known as the pride of Mansfield. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love his music. Have, have, you should listen to his music if you haven't yet. Autopoxy. He's a musician. He's artist. He musician. does it all. He does it all, truly. Yeah. So, but back to Robert. Robert who you Allen. Are. Yeah, I'll just Incredible one-wheeler, OG community member, beat me at Float Life Fest Race 3, right? Oh, I remember that. Yep. I remember passing you and being like, I finally made it. <laughs> I just passed Bodie. Wait, on what? On the XR race? Dude, yeah. yeah. He beat me in the XR oh, race. I was nicely pissed. Done, sir. Nicely done. It's like, damn, I got like fifth or something like that. You got fourth, right? Or third? Nah, dude, I saw you. You were so relaxed. You were like, I don't care if I win or not. I'm just well, gonna have fun, you know? <clears throat> that's true. That's, that's, that's how, it how it goes. You. But at, at, at the end of the race, you know that little moment where you're like, how did I do? And you're like, I was like, fuck. It's like, All right, whatever. Yeah. On to the next. Dom won that race. Isaac got second. I got third. 
and then he got fourth, right? You got maybe fourth? I think so. There you go. And maybe fifth? I may be fifth. Maybe even sixth, man. Oof. I blew it in that race. I was on a stock XR with a 20 PSI Vega and, and mud-packed grip tape. Stop. Wasn't everyone on a stock XR No, 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 then? no, 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 no. This was the period of time. There was a one-year period of time where Bodie had to ride stock everything, including grip tape. Mm. He was not contractually allowed to ride anything else, right? Mm. Oh, yes. bro. That was in that year. It was so a sorry. year of growth and learning how to ride the most the not the not the not ideal setup. But um it was it was at a time where I had the opportunity to work with one wheel and do some events with them and stuff. And uh and they sent me some boards and all my all my setups were contractually obligated to stay sock. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So when I passed you, you were on a Vega. Yeah. Does that does that make it not as sweet? <laughs> I just things? lost some self esteem. <laughs> <there. I'm sorry. laughs> I was like, "How is this possible?" Well, that's how it's possible. Oh, I <laughs> no. hate to burst your bubble on that one. That's disappointing. No. So you can't that blame race, it on the gear, that though. race, I actually raced an extra lap because I lost track. That's so funny. Yeah, and I was like, "I have to, I have to be done by now, right?" And they were like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah you were done, bro." <laughs> Dude, that race was hectic because we were lapping people after like the second lap. That was a that race. Yeah. It was a an, a mass start race where how many people was in that? You think two hundred and something? And I remember and it was a one mile loop, so it was like yeah. two hundred people mad like sprint start into a loop, similar to how they do it still at, at Flow Life Fest. Um, and it was like a one mile loop with everybody all on top of each other with the hill. Didn't you have a crazy oh, the hill, story? hill The hill yeah. was a mess, and you, for some reason, couldn't pass people on the hill, which didn't make sense. Like, it was against the rules to pass people on a hill. So, but like, well, no, no, you, you, you can't the pass them if you're carrying. If you're carrying. But after you start lapping people right out the gate, it's like, well, who am I passing? Who am I not passing? Who have I lapped already? What's going on? It was and a people, mental game. Half the people were like, I don't give a shit. I'm just going to run past people anyway. Yeah. So it was a really weird situation. And then you'd get into the single track and you'd lap someone, but then you'd get stuck behind them and some people didn't want to move. And it was, that race was hectic. Hectic race. Dave Stewart broke his collarbone. That was the race. Of, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was like right up there in the whole shot territory and he just dug his nose into the grass and just oh my split gosh. it. I remember him having a broken collarbone at the rest of that event. Yeah, he's always, so damn tough. He's he was like, like, I don't know. I think it's okay. Dude, he's, yeah, I was And like, race the rest of the weekend, had a great time. And then he's went home. He's like, yeah, broken it's, bones. It's and he's just like, he shrugged. He's a I'm tough good. mountain man, baby. We're still going riding, right? <laughs> he's a tough mountain man, that guy. Tahoe Dave. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, Badger, Robert Allen, legendary one wheel rider. You were the inventor of the Badger kit. And that's a waterproofing kit for your one wheel. Bring us back. What's what's all what's that all about? Let us know what the Badger Kit's about and like the origin yeah, of it. Not a lot of people know about it, but actually, you, you can waterproof your one wheel if you want. Yeah, DIY. They're not waterproof. Yeah, yeah one wheels aren't waterproof. They're very water resistant. Mm. Can I? How do I do air quotes with? There we Just go. like that, <laughs> you're doing a great job. <laughs> That's exactly how it's done. Yeah. So uh, Ohio does get a lot of rain, and um, the other thing they get is the surprise thunderstorms mm. so that happened to me once when i was out on a really long ride on the way back you know it kind of starts getting darker and you're like oh this is fine this will be fine yeah was this back in like v1 plus xr um i believe i was on like my very first xr first XR. i don't really remember early i should have done days. more research for these questions yeah, you could have been like, prepared. When did this happen? I'm like, I don't know. It was more than two years ago. So yeah, that's good. Enough. <laughs> that's good. Enough. <laughs> it, was, it was, I think, an XR. Um, yeah. So I just got caught in this in this crazy thunderstorm. I had done like a little bit of, you know, waterproofing. A couple. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I just had some stuff done. Anyway, I got lucky because my board didn't brick. But um, dude, it was one of those thunderstorms, and we can cut to the video of it because. I was bringing. <laughs> oh, we got video. Oh, yeah. Oh, great! It's probably right here on this wall that's not green. Yeah, it's it's right <laughs> up there. Uh, no, I had my I had my 360 cam just in case, you know. Yeah, of course, got to have the camera on. And it was one of those thunderstorms where the sun is still shining through, but it's still downpouring. It was so weird. Whoa, those are, like, those are cool. There's like a rainbow. Yeah. Your shadows there, and you're like, what's going on? How is this? But yeah, it was just dumping. On 
Damn. Uh, I'm just going to hope I make it back to my car. This is pre-waterproofing kit. Um, <clears throat> well, I like to kind of lie about that a little bit. This is one of those fake it till you make it type things because I I, post, I posted the video and then uh, everyone's like, oh my God, like how did you waterproof your board? And I was like, well, let me get back to you on that. I, uh, <laughs> and then well, I came out I mean, with the kit and I was like, well, as long as you replied like, well, to that after you made the kit, then you just explained the kit. Technically, it was, yeah. <laughs> so. That's cool, man. Because that's like, like Jeff said, water water isn't, as big of an issue for us out here. It doesn't rain as much. Um, it's more of an issue of breaking our boards. It's our, our biggest problem we deal with. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah, man, the the Badger kit's sweet. I know a lot of people that have badgered their boards. Um, it's Badgering the board is like the word for waterproofing. I think it's kind of cool. I don't ever yeah, hear I've, anybody say, like, I the, waterproofed my it's board. It's the Q-tip of waterproof. Yeah. Kits. I didn't plan it that yeah. way. I yeah. just... It, at some point, somebody was like, can we ride through that? And I was like, yeah, my board's badgered. It's fine. And it I think just, it was Ori, and he was like, badgered. He's like, dude, you just branded yourself. You got verbed. Yeah. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. What, what's with the name Badger? Where does Badger come from? Are Badgers waterproof? Yeah, the hardest part of starting my company was coming up with the name. I mean, it, you, it was you terrible. Only, I had one. the website and everything, and I was like, but uh, – I I don't know what's my domain name going to be. I have to buy one. Yeah, <laughs> and you got to stick with it. Did you just start I, looking up animals until you found one that was together. available? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, because I know like the, the honey badger videos or whatever. I'm like, oh, it's yeah, ferocious, and I was like, fuck. well, it, I finally settled on an animal. I was like, okay, you got to pick an animal. That's a great idea. I like that. But then it couldn't just be the animal. It's got to have something to do with one wheel. So then I just okay put the two words together and badger badger, badger wheel. wheel. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. I mean, it doesn't but have people to. people remember it. Does, it. it does make sense. It makes enough sense. Because badgers are, like, really cool animals and, like, badass, like, creatures. And then there's that viral video from way back that everybody loves to, like, honey badger don't give a f- Honey badger don't give I was like, yeah, dude. that sounds like a good brand for me. I wish you I remember just, the Badgers are only cute well depending on the location that you go to. Because I saw this meme the other day, and we could probably throw it up. We'll see if I can find it again and get it over to Colton. But it was, like, American badgers versus English badgers. And the American badgers are gnarly. That's like the honey badger type stuff, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, it's mean as all hell. Then the English badgers, those little black ones with the white stripes on them, was like, oh, let's get a spot of tea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. English bad, like looking like this, right? Like super cute. American badgers, like, ugh. no thanks. Yeah, badgers. Yeah, so there's a, um, there's a version of this logo that we did for our uh, short shorty rails. Yeah. Affectionately known as Tiny Tails. Tiny tails. And Ori made the logo T-squared, baby. into this absolutely adorable little baby badger. You can't even look at it without kind of That's like so smiling and crying. Oh, he's so cute. That's so funny. Um, so yeah, the badger is, is a good is a good animal. Badger is a good animal. And badger is a good company and a good brand. You've already done some really cool stuff like the badger kit, and then you did the badger sense. Or you did what was the light the badger light bar thing you did? Yeah, that's Badger Sense. The, yeah, that's well, sort that's of my latest thing that I got into. Sensor is the, what? What's the sensor one called? Oh, the Sure Start. Yeah, sure yeah. Start. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So Badger Sense is the next one, right? Badger Sense is well, like, the Badger Sense for XR has been out for a while. Right. Um, that was tell, last, tell me about that last Float Life Fest is when that. Right, I remember that release. Out. I was there. Yeah. Did so you wear the helmet with the heads up display and everything? Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I like to ride fast and. I got to this point where I could sometimes tell that, like, oh, the board's sort of dipping a little bit. I need to, like, suddenly react so I don't just eat it instantly. Um, and you can see the pro riders doing that. If you watch the races carefully, you know, you can see you see that little nose dip and they just they recover it. Oh, yeah, you oh, ride yeah. that top end and you're basically, like, surge. on an endo board at that top so end. So like, yeah. yeah, like, I wasn't super skilled enough to, like, reliably detect that every single time. Um, and so I wanted to know... Okay, well, what if I could somehow, what if the board would somehow tell me a little in advance before it gave out? Like, wouldn't that be, then I could go like right as fast as I could go all the time. Right, you know where the line is. Which is the only way to ride. And did you think like visibly is the way to do it right out the gate, like with lights, or were you just thinking, I need something else? Yeah, well, I mean, I thought about how would be the best way to do it. Um, You know, is it sound? Is it visual? And I went with visual just because it's a lot of times you're, there's other sounds involved. It's yeah, going to annoy other people. Loud. 
Um, yep. So what's sort of the best? Oh, sorry, my board's beeping. I'm just riding too fast right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, like the GT, when I got the GT, I was like, what's this beep when I first rode? I'm like, what yeah. is that? That's <laughs> annoying. Yeah, you're like, wait, did bug? I hear a beep? It's like so quiet half the time that I'm like, oh, did it beep? I don't know. It's a nudge notifier is what I call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. A nudge. It tells you when you're ready to nudge. Yep. It's like <laughs> when this beeps, you pop. <laughs> Um, so you went with the the visual. Yeah, so cue. I went with visual, and I, you know, at first it was just a question of like, is this even something that could be done? Like, right. could I somehow like tap into the Kinda wires it's even and possible. Like, without voiding the warranty? And oh, never, never <laughs> yeah. mind. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> Did I say that's not possible. <laughs> uh, no, is it even technically possible? And so it was just like a fun project at first. It was like, oh, this will be so fun. I'm like, yeah get some little Arduino boards and I'll like learn some electronics and like, this will be cool. Um, and then when I did the first prototype and it was like, Oh, it works. Like, Oh, sweet. Yeah, <laughs> and then, it, and then it was the process of, okay, well, how do I get that to a point where it can actually be used? And then the heads up display was kind of an additional thing. Cause the, the base unit is just on your board. You got to look down. Right. And you don't want to look down right. when you're riding. Yeah, you want to be looking where you're going. Especially at top speeds yeah, top when you're speed. worried about dying. Because yeah. by the time you look down, you're like, oh, oh, I've already hit the ground. I mean, it was <laughs> fine. It was good for, like, getting a feel for, like, ooh, is this about how fast it feels to be, you know, at 80% or yeah. whatever. And so um, it was good at first. But then I got ambitious and was like, dude, I got to have a heads-up display. Yeah. I mean, um, I so, yeah, the idea of something in your peripheral vision, so, sort of what I settled on, is, like, you don't have to look at it. You just, I like that. You can still see it, but you never have to take like your actually focus off. put your focus directly on yeah, it. Yeah, because dude, when you ride trails, it's like no, you got to be laser like, like focused, like hundred like yeah. percent. Yeah, that's the whole flow state of it. Is like yeah. it's just coming at you, and your brain is just like on wow, autopilot. Wow, wow, yeah, your eyes are constantly going close, far, close, far, close, far. You know what you should have done? You know it'd been wild. Yeah, projector off the front of the board. Oh. Project Boom. it right out in front where you're already looking at Headlight it. Headlight mod coming soon. Oh. And it projects a grid pattern so you can see the differences in elevation on the trail. Yo. Yeah. See, I mean, I'll, I'll see, take royalties for that. I don't know why I didn't think together. of that. Let me just go do that real quick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, you could do it. You've done some wild stuff. I don't go. understand how you figure out like the electronics and stuff of the board so well. Like Dude, the uh, sure no stuff. Sense I'll, to I'll tell you. I'll tell you the secret. What's the sauce? People don't see the secret sauce. It's trying it and failing, and then like feeling really dumb, and then like making another stupid mistake, and then another stupid mistake. Let me tell you an embarrassing story about stupid mistakes, please. It actually, this is an embarrassing story about the very first Badger kit. Sweet, let's go. I had an event. Okay. Come badger your boards. Try out. Okay, my, like at your house? My, my like premier, a party badger up. It was a, the first like a tie -dye party. party. The badger party. Sick. Yeah. Sounds epic. People have those now. They get Everyone gets together. It's, it's like, all right, thing. let's go through a couple beers, a couple cases. Depends how long it takes. Yep. Usually it's, <laughs> everyone's pretty drunk by the end. <laughs> um, but the very first badger party. Um, my kit was a little different back then. I had um, a water-based sealant. Ooh. Which is super great. Once you let it dry, obviously, it's no longer an this issue. This requires patience, which after a case or two of beer, <laughs> people see, don't seem to have. You see maybe where this is going. Uh, but, um, yeah, I was kind of excited to, like, get things sealed up. This water base is it, very uh, very flowable. So it was able to get into these little cracks and crevices. Really not, not as viscous. Yeah, you don't want that thick, goopy silicone stuff from Home Depot. No, you want it to really get where so, it needs yeah, to get. So, yeah, dude, this was so easy to use, and I was like, dude, you're good to go, man. Like, I got your board all fixed up. I'm not going to say who it was, but <laughs> anyway, we yeah, we flipped this board over, powered it on, and there was this little popping sound. And we're like, uh... <laughs> I don't know what. That is. Oh no! The magic smoke <laughs> was building inside. I was, I, was, I was just like, well, maybe if we turn it off and on again. No, it didn't oh, work. Oh boy! Oh no. Um. So yeah, I bought him a new board. That was cool. Dang, um, the water glue. And, and that was like a bit of a confidence. That was one of those moments where I'm like, oh, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Which was absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it was absolutely true. Well, so I went back home. I was like, "All right, let's see if I can like pick up the pieces of my pride and confidence, and like maybe we can have another go at it." You know, let's yeah. see what we can do here. And uh, I did. I found better materials and blah blah blah. And 
figured it out. But yeah, it was just a couple moments there where if you had seen me at work, you would have been like, yeah, this guy's he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> so humble that's, beginnings. That's the secret. Yeah, humble beginnings. I so, mean, that's that's true. Yeah, that's interesting to hear that there's more than one uh, controller that was water damaged while badgering. So do you know about Sean Keck's story? I heard about somebody who put his controller up to dry in the garage and there was some leak, yeah. a yeah. random leak <laughs> yeah. that just happened to go right onto his controller. Is that yep. right? Yeah, that's 100% what happened. So while he's badgering his board to prevent water damage, it actually created water damage of the most unlucky situation of all time. Yeah, he said it perfectly vertical, open, it was drying, and then he ended up having a roof leak that dropped Perfectly right, right into perfectly it. down into it and flooded it. Like, what are the chances? It like had to be perfectly in that one spot for okay. it to like drop in there. Yeah, that's so, that's some bad karma right there. We don't know what good. he did to yeah. deserve that. I don't know, but shout out Sean Keck, Santa Cruz Wheel Slip Services. We love you, Sean. Love you, buddy. He just, dude. He we we needed to go to Santa Cruz to film this tack video we just filmed yesterday, and I hit Sean up. I was like, hey man, we got four of us. You down to host us? He's like, "Oh, dude, you're good. Pull up. You don't need, you don't need anything. Just get your bodies here." And we're like, "All right, pull up." He's got a fresh pull behind trailer, shacked us all up in for the night, cooked us all chicken and watermelons and corn and full cookout. Full cookout, dude. Full cookout. Full full like Sean's the man. Sean yeah. is the absolute man. We're big fans. Big fans of Sean. Yeah. Have you met Sean yet? Sean who? Sean Keck. Keck, Santa Cruz Wheel Slip Services. You've met Sean before. You've I, you been, know what? There are so many people that I've met. Dude, <laughs> hundreds. <laughs> I've yeah, definitely yeah. met, and I'm like, yes. I, you'd see him. You'd be like, 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 oh, of course. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. He's usually the guy, like him and Bob Nicholson are the ones that are always repairing boards at all these events on the West Coast, at least. So. Yeah. Sean is definitely one of the, the main, like, West Coast. I know how to, probably know how to get your board going, guys. That's, yeah, I'll depend on where people are located. I'll be like, go to Bob or go to Sean. Mm. You're good. Oh, yeah. No, I've definitely met him. Yeah. Multiple events. Yep. Um, so then you, so you, you create the Badger Sense to see, to get to know the max limit of your board. And then you made something that uh, works with the sensor, correct? Something that you can kind of change how your sensor operates. More, sure, a, more, sure, a more advanced yeah. posi so, sensor. So the posi has been out for a while where you just physically connect the two sides of the sensor together. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm not a big trick writer, but there was a moment at Foot Life S3. Actually, I only barely got into that dual solemn race. I was number 60 seed. <clears throat> out of 60 people. Out of 64. 64. Okay. 64. Oh, right, right, right. And I was number 60 only because, like, I totally ripped the time trial. Mm -hmm. And then right at the end, I came off, and I tried to get back on my board. And I was all nervous. And I was like, boom. And the front just went down. And it was like four times where I was like, I'm just not going to finish this race. I'm just going to have to carry my board because I can't freaking. So I finally got it. Um, so I was aware of the benefits of tying the two sides together with a, with a posi. Right. Um, but every time I tried a posi board, I would go to do that heel lift dismount. And it's like, no, you have to jump off with both feet. I was like, oh, like, I guess I can do that. <laughs> but yeah, no, you just quick stop, baby. Silly. Just quick stop. Yeah. There's, there's, okay. there's, Let's yeah, there's a couple ways. You can also, uh, you can also pivot your foot to like the front edge of the foot pad and lift oh, up all the way to the, the front very, edge. very front. Yeah. That's yeah, how Raquel like, gets off her boards. And it'll get you off, like, off of that one. Oh. Like, so you either, like, skid stop. All right, so it's just, just a technique little, issue. Then. Yeah. There's tech. Let us um, know if you need it. <laughs> there's, there's tech. There's a lot but, of tricks I don't know, guys. Carry on. You're all good. Um, so, yeah. So, I, I looked at that and, and I thought, okay, well, I would love to have a posi, but I just I want to have that flexibility. Right. So, I'd already done, like, the electronic stuff. I didn't really know how to do electronic stuff before. You know, Badger Sense is just something I, in my spirit, it was like, oh, I guess I'll learn how to do this. Let's go. So you tinker thing, yeah. Really? Um, yeah. So That's then, impressive. I mean, I didn't have zero knowledge. It just wasn't something I'd been doing. Right. Um, as far as actually building much of anything. So, yeah. So I thought, oh, I can just, I, I can use my existing, you know, new skill set here and let's make something that's computer controlled and a smart system. And so, yeah, I put it together, something that'll, that'll give you that posi when you need it and take it away when you don't. Um, and then I realized, oh, I can add some other stuff in here. So basically what it, you know, what it does is so it, it's like a man in the middle 
that like can press the sensor for you whenever it wants to, right? You know, whatever it's programmed to do. So I realized that well, okay, I, mean, I could also hold down the sensor longer when you go over a drop or a jump or something, give you a little bit Keep more it delay. Engaged. And uh, Chris Richardson actually, he was using something similar from Landsurf. He had a custom platypus front that gave him a delay. So for these weird, crazy tricks, people want to put a massive delay. And so you can set short start to go up to like two seconds. You hop off the board and it'll just keep the sensor on. It stays for two seconds. So people are doing weird stuff, you know, jumping off, running backwards, waiting for the board to come back to them, jumping on as it's yeah. accelerating. And it's like, yeah. okay, that's kind of fun. Like, yeah. Kind of dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of dumb. But. <laughs> Let's have boards ghost on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so now I'm now I'm looking into that a little bit more with the with the GT because I mean I don't I don't ride hard enough. To like, you ride pretty hard. Dude, you are you no ride slouch, tough, my bro. friend. <laughs> yeah, I was chasing are, you down. I, I ride and you enough ride to, tough. Bro. I had to like yell I, back I to the down. homies. I was like, "Yo, Rob, fucking rips!" <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes go faster than is safe for somebody um, for anyone. Um, no, so but people who are getting a lot of air doing a lot of jumps. I didn't know people were having trouble. Like, it, yeah. like Dave and That's Austin were like, dude, I keep, smokes you I on keep fins. falling. And I'm like, why? Like, the board just, like, I land and it disengages. And I'm like, okay, well, you could do a sure start. And it's like, well, yeah, but, and that helped him a lot. Um, yeah, because we, we saw that disengagement this year Noah. at Easterns. Well, Easterns, it happened say, to Austin. It happened to Austin when he was racing against Brandon Peavy in the finals, I believe, at Eastern qualifiers for ORL. His, he went over that lip, and his board just shut off, and he nose dove and went down. Yeah, I mean, happened it's kind of hard Noah to tell. but like It, it uh, raced to the rail also. On the yeah. first dirt kicker, he went off and landed. Nothing. Because your board to re like, if it disengages in the air and reads that you're not on it, to re-engage, it needs both sensors activated and level. And level. To, to and, then yeah. turn on and, and gut yeah. gas. Yeah. yeah. So, so a lot of times you land a little bit nose forward, or or it could even be nose back. It's either yeah. one yeah. Um, if you don't have both on there. But it's hard to sort of see in the video. It just looks like, oh, he landed, and then he kind of like put his weight too far forward and did like a regular nose dive. Yeah. Where you just overpower it. But in fact, there was no power there at all. You just, and that actually happened to me at a Foot Life Fest too. Really? I did like a little jump and I just nosed down. I was like, oh, I guess I'm, I guess I'm not very good at this. <laughs> because <laughs> it just like nose right into the ground. I'm like, what I guess happened? I suck. <laughs> uh, I just went straight to the ground. So I'm trying to look at uh, how can we add some even more functionality. Right. For the new one. Yeah. Um, yeah. The new, the newest one, uh, I probably shouldn't say this because I still want people to buy the regular one. Well, <laughs> Don't guess, worry. This won't air for I at least I'll, a week. I guess I'll <laughs> just charge more. I'll just yeah. charge more for the pro version. Um, no, but I want to do drop detection so that you, when you get air, it'll keep your sensor on until you hit the ground. Right. How do you so program way, something like that? Like, how can the one wheel tell that it's in the air? That's what we're trying to Well, so the out, one right? wheel already knows. It already has a sensor that I don't have access to that mm. tells you how it's tilted and the whatever. So that right. can also tell you if it's in free fall. Interesting. But if you're yeah. going up, is that the same thing? Well, like, so if your feet are off the board, it's in free fall. Right. It's a zero-G environment. Yeah. Yeah. And it can feel that. Yeah. So the sensor will just read that it, there's, like, nothing – so free fall is very easy. Anything like your – actually, you know what has it is like the new – like the Apple Watch that detects if you fall in and it calls 911 for you. Right. It detects that zero G. It detects that zero G for a certain amount of time. It's like, oh, you must have just fallen like pretty significantly. So I can use that by putting my own sensor in there um, to just keep it on. Like, okay, your board's flying through the air. You know how Let's that make goes. make sure to stay on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For like one or two seconds, depending yeah. on how crazy you are. Luke Austin, he knows all about those multiple seconds <sighs> in the air. That dude's a minute and a half in the Dude. air these days. He's a wild <laughs> oh boy. Oh, my gosh. He's flying now. He's not even floating. <laughs> I got a chance to see him last weekend in person, and it was just like, okay, I've seen the videos, but then you you actually go up to the feature that he's doing, and you're like, okay, so he's – How'd you so get all the way over the there? Care. And then there's all this stuff, and then they – what? And then, Dude, like, watch, how watching him come the into those where, like, he's just going – he's going full like – he's going to hit this thing. At, Dude, it was 22. We, we, got his, we got his speed. 
just for reference because you know people were trying to figure out how to do it and i'm like right. well how fast well, you do you have your, to be you going to have the speed and it's like that's the answer you got to go 22 <laughs> hit the lip at 22 hit that's the lip what's at messed 22. up yeah if you're going slower than that you're not going to make it holy fuck <laughs> it's so terrifying but yeah you're in the air that long and it's like dude your board's going to shut off mm-hmm. and then you have to land it perfectly and then you got to hope you get that that's like yeah, yeah. floaty and kyle they get worked on their flight fins all the time from that exact thing. You jump in the air, you get up in that zero G environment, and if you're if you're not tilted at all, you're not spinning the tire enough for it to think you're still engaged. So it full shut off, and yep. then you come back down to the ground from five feet in the air and coming in at fifteen miles an hour, and the board doesn't engage, and you're hooked into the fins, and you just get smoked. That's why. That's one of the main reasons you don't see fins on my board. Is because a lot of times you would do these amazing tricks could, that you could unlock with the fins on, but then you come to land and it's just like womp, womp, yep. womp. See you later, shoulder. Womp. Oh, it kills your confidence. And you know, one thing about one wheel that I think we love so much about it is that you kind of forget that it's an electric vehicle. Yeah. It just yeah. kind of responds. No, you don't have a controller. There's no button. It's a magic car. It's bit. silent. You just, yeah. you just, it's going according to your body movements, and you just forget that it's actually like a lot of complexity going on in there. And so to have it you know, shut off randomly when you're not expecting, it kind of kills the mood. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, 100%. I know all about but you that, lose yeah. that connection, and you can't just sort of lose yourself and like, all right, I know how this works. You know, like a snowboard, you know, it, it just works the way it's supposed to. I mean, imagine if your bindings just popped off randomly. Yeah. I've been there. I've had, I've had that <laughs> it's happen. A, yeah, it's man. happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's like, but I get, no, it's like it's when you're fucked. riding your snowboard, like you don't even think about it, but every once in a while, like maybe once every couple of years, you'll hook a random edge out of nowhere and you just like wake up on the ground like, what just happened? That was weird. Yeah, because usually so, your setup's the same every time. Every and like time, a kick, yeah. a, a skateboard, every time you pop it and kick it, the board's going to be the same. It's yeah. up to you to to nail the trick but the the electric board adds another variable because it's like you got to land it and the board's got to do its job too to a t yeah. well that's what i noticed that was kind of a tough mental barrier for me too going over and starting to ride vesk a lot like i've been on one wheels for what like seven plus years now yeah. and i know them pretty well as far as what the firmware is going to do exactly when i do everything so jumping onto a vesk i didn't trust it as much right out the gate and I was like definitely riding way timid on stuff and not riding it like I wouldn't normally ride a one wheel. And I think that was kind of a big like mental barrier for me to get over in order to actually trust that. Mm-hmm. So I get it. You've been digging yeah. on that vest, huh? I mean, I don't want to talk about it too much. <laughs> I'm but... hearing a lot of talk on the streets about Jeff's Instagram story. Everyone's, you see Jeff's Instagram story? Did you see Jeff's Instagram story? <laughs> It's kind of dank. It's kind of dank. I know. And it's, <laughs> and it's funny because there was like, if you talked to me two weeks ago, which Max did, I think Max actually, by the time this airs, I'm sure his video is going to be out. Yeah. But yeah, we did like an hour long interview about Vesk and sort of our thoughts on it and everything. And I was like, yeah, it's cool. It's got a ton of potential. You know, I see it, but I think it's like a year away from actually being a viable competitor to Future Motion. And then um, at Winman, right around Winman, uh, it got unlocked, right? So when all the guys get together in a zone, who thought? No, what happened is there was a big, um, sort of like a big firmware update. So you probably know more about this than I do, Robert, but can you explain what was going on? So basically before this big firmware update, it would be a bit teeter-tottery, kind of like not to the extent of like trotters are, but like if you brake super hard, you can get some motor crunch and then it'll sort of try to balance you out really quick and throw you forward. You kind of almost do a little bit of a seesaw effect. And then on top of that, when you start getting into chunky terrain, it was having an issue called nose hunting where the nose would kind of get lower and lower and kind of be sketchier and wasn't super consistent. And then there was a huge unlock that happened. uh, And maybe you can talk a little bit about that because you know more than me for sure. Well, yeah, I mean, I know a little bit more. You should really get Mitch on here because he's the, the mastermind. Yeah, my personal yeah, my to. personal hero and the personal <laughs> hero of quite a few people. That's sick. Shout out Mitch. Yeah, no, dude, he's seriously. Thank you, Mitch. He's a genius. Mitch, whatever you need, man, we're here for you. <laughs> we're here for you, brother. Yeah. So, what did what did Mitch find that what sort of unlocked this whole thing? Because so, this has been an issue that's been plaguing Vesk for, I mean, what months, years plus, right? Yeah. So the I mean the source of the issue has been known for a while. It's basically just the the sensor that determines 
your orientation, if you shock it in one direction, it has no idea now what, what's down and what's up, basically. Hmm. So it's a sensor that if you hold it still and you, you rotate it, it'll tell you this is down, this is down, this is down. That's the IMU? That's the IMU. Okay. Um, when you shove it in one direction, you hit a rock or something like that, uh, it gets the sensor gets confused, gives you the wrong data, basically. Right. So you have to do some smart, like filtering, to, to like figure filter out, out the what bad it's data. Supposed to be like it's telling you this is what the angle is, and you have to be smart and say no, no, no. It's actually we got to ignore that part. We got to filter it out. We got to do some smart math. So huh. that's what he did. That's nuts. Yeah. So it's a bunch of uh, nerd stuff programming. Beyond Way me. over my yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> all, all I it's know about, is yeah. it's about understanding what's going on in those sensors. You know, what does it really mean for the board to be hitting rocks and going over bumps? Right. And then mathematically, what does that mean? And then how do we and get rid of those? Mm-hmm. Um, so even Nico uh, has a video. Shout out Nico. Shout out Nico. Shout no, but out he has Nico. a video. Maybe we can put it up of even Future Motion, a Future Motion board. Hitting a bunch of little, um, like a rumble strip. Uh-huh. If you hit it at the right frequency, his board just nose into the ground instantly. Huh. Yeah. So it, it's not an issue that's completely, I mean, Future Motion solved it for the most part. Right. Um, but it's a hard problem, is the point. So, but Vesk was having that problem just all over the place. So you started in a few rocks and it's like suddenly your nose down. Yeah, it made it terrifying. It was terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Because, uh, again, going with the flow state, you expect the board to behave a certain way and, and suddenly th- throws you off. It's not yeah. fun anymore. Then you're in the dirt. So, I mean, that's solving that was, it made all the difference. All the difference. It, it goes incredible. from like a scary, nervous experience to like, oh, this, oh, is, this great. is fun now. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> relax. <laughs> I love that. Because that was one of my away. biggest problems with the Vesk when I would ride it, is I was like, okay, this is. This is pretty cool for tricks for sh- cruising around on street. I was like, this is this is cool. Like I rode uh, Veed's VX wheel. I rode Dado's wheel at uh, Wheel Fun Weekend in San Diego, and I was like, these are sweet to cruise on. But tricks, it's not quite there with how I want it to react and how I'm programmed. And yeah. then with trails and any kind of bumps, you, you start bumping, and the nose is all over the place. And I didn't feel confident on it. Yeah, if you're just a mellow cruiser, yeah, it was, it was fine. Great. Yeah, it was yeah. super cool. Yeah, but it sounds like. Trails got unlocked, and from what Jeff was telling me the other day, being able to do tricks has – it almost seems like it's better than than your – like some of the clips you posted and some of what you were seeing, the board seems like – I forget what you're telling me. Um, it's, it's, it's shutting off faster, right, and activating better? It can shut off faster if you want it to. So you can change the milliseconds that the board stays on once you come off the sensor. So um, on tricks like shove it, on tricks like the no comply spins that I do and things like that, if the sensor stays on for too long, the wheel's gonna spin and you've got conservation of angular momentum and the board's gonna react funny, right? It's gonna roll to the side on shove and things like that. But when you can turn the sensor off just a hair of a millisecond faster than that, you can get it to deactivate for you quicker. So now shoves, totally flat. So like Floaty was able to pull a shove off this ledge that was just yeah. bolts. And we were like, what is that? He's like, oh, it's Vesk. You know, and this was even before the firmware update. And so like, yeah, I, I went out and I took 15 minutes and I tried a couple tricks on the Vesk. I've been riding it for two, three days at this point. So yeah. I'm still pretty new at it. But um, I was able to do front board shove second try, mm-hmm. which is crazy because that usually takes me 10 to 20 tries to lace that. And then I was able to get that back nose pop up body varial out. I've never been able to do that before on a one wheel and I did it second try. Laced it. Yeah, like second try on, on a Vesk, which is crazy. So there's a, it opens up the doors a lot. And then the one thing that I really, really, really love about it um, a lot of the tricks that we do on one wheels involve like either spinning the board around really fast and landing back on it or pulling it up vertically mm-hmm. and then throwing it back down and landing on it. Like, you know, Float Goat does those crazy finger hard flips and things like that. Yep. Uh, Brandon LaCour has been doing a bunch of stuff like that. The big issue is the majority of the time that you do that, unless you land absolutely perfect in that perfect like area even if you do the board doesn't click on half the time and it'll just 
and you just can't get the sensor to activate. So sensor activation problems have always kind of been a thing with tricks that have just plagued us oh, all yeah. the time. You, I have never seen you so frustrated than every single time you try to get a trick and the sensor just won't turn on for you. It happened to me yesterday. Yeah, and Bodhi gets upset, which is crazy to see because he's such a happy every guy. Every single time. Yeah. And you're like, eight tries, really? Yeah. Eight times you're not going to activate? Yeah. Oh yeah, it'd be it'd yeah, be like if <laughs> it'd be like if most of the time when you landed on your skateboard, your bearings just fully locked up for some reason. Yeah, you're like, oh. and then sometimes it didn't lock up. Right, yeah. it's basically the same thing. Yeah, but with the Vesk sensor activation, it turns on a hundred percent of the time, like maybe ninety nine percent of the time. I don't know. I haven't missed one. I can do throwdowns on the board now. Yeah, which, you, can do- you remember when I did that for the first time on one yeah. wheels? I was like, check it out. It took me like ten tries, but I was able to finally like run Ping. full speed throw the board down in front of me and just jump on it like running full like speed. Like a skateboard? Like it's hard. Yeah, like a skateboard, on, like a throwdown. I've n- never missed one on this Vesk. Every single time it works. It's crazy. It's so, so just the sensor activation on it alone makes tricks like a thousand times easier. And so that's cool like to a, hear because it's like, to finish what I was saying is now that it's fun on trails and now that it's fun with tricks and it's fun to cruise around, it's like, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you ride a Vesk? Like, why wouldn't you ride a Vesk now? Well, What's, here's, and that's a legitimate question. Why wouldn't you ride a Vesk now? Well, at well, this point in time, I'll tell you why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No. I mean, I've got reasons. Well, I mean, too, personally, but, yeah. personally, being from Ohio, the um, the waterproofing, it's still a 3D printed controller box. Right. Um, I would not ride my Vesk in a thunderstorm. Right. No, it's duct tape and bubble gum on the controller box. Right now, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe with a little more love, we'll get there. Totally. Because um, it's still I, in its early stages. Other than that, I, I don't know how long the capacitors are going to last on that before they fall off. Mm-hmm. Um, I know on a on my One Wheel Plus, I was doing some – when I was trying to learn curb nudges, I, <laughs> it was literally one day I had a, I had a new board – uh-huh. And I wasn't I wasn't very good at it. I kept slapping the nose down on the curb like over and over and over and over. And later the same day I was riding back from lunch, boom, just shut off on me because oh. of that loose <laughs> capacitor. Yeah. You know how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Been there. Straight up. Yep. Smacking those things around. Well, and that's like that's something that I hope either the the homies working on the vests can figure out. Um, but I I'm curious like how how they could make the controllers of the one wheels or the vests more shockproof for stuff like that. Cause the boards are made like to self balance themselves and get you point A to B. They've never been made to do what we do where what I mean by that is a lot of our tricks require like, like for curb nudges, smacking the curb and popping up or nose slides, smacking onto it or dropping like drops, hitting hard or popping up that they're not designed necessarily for that. And I'm just curious, like, because I'm just really starting to dive in and try to understand like technology and electronics and stuff like that more. But what what could be done to make the controllers more shockproof? Like, what? well, they did it. It's really dumb. What you, is it? You just turn it upside down. Really? It's literally. How does that make it more shockproof? It's literally it. So the the things that come apart are on the XR. They're hanging upside down. So when you when you shock it, it's like they're they're it's hanging, pulling. and so they're going to try to fall off. On the GT and the Pint, they flip the circuit board upside down. You know how on the, the GT, so you, the, you take off the lid of the controller, right. it's on the bottom. Yeah. On the XR, it's Bodhi's not it's aware of what's inside these things. He thinks it's just magic. You've dust. never opened up one of these things, no, I'm have, sure. Have. Yeah. <laughs> He's actually not allowed to. Not Every allowed time to. Bodhi touches a wrench, a one wheel dies. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you can imagine if something's sitting on top of the circuit board and you drop it on the ground right. it's still on top it's yeah. more secure yeah so that's cool i i just feel like they could put in like rubber rubberization of some kind or like shock absorbing pads or like something to also because like the way these things slap on their sides is it, they take so much shock and i feel like that's well, was, what oh, yeah, the side breaks well. like a lot of yeah. boards is like those really hard side smacks and those really heavy controller hits and so i've always wondered if like there's some kind of suspension technology or like bumpering technology where they could add in some kind of gaskets or or something that would that would absorb the shock but do you think that would affect the responsiveness of the controller it's just sort of technically challenging i mean especially with the gt and the pine the the controller and battery boxes and stuff are they're also structural mm-hmm. so they they tie everything together you, you can't have a 
good structural connection if it's also, f you know, floating in rubber mounts or something that's... So, I mean, shock, shock resistance is not impossible for electronics. There's all kinds of stuff that's, you know, designed to be smacked around military hardware and stuff like that. You just have to use the right kind of epoxy and other things to hold things down and you'll be fine. Also, I'd probably be a lot less concerned about shockproofing stuff if we were able to easily repair or replace these things, right? Like right. it wouldn't be a big deal. Yeah. It wouldn't big be a big time. deal at all. The the big issue that I have is when it does happen, it's a whole freaking thing to get it back up and running again, right? Yep. Like if you're 4210 or beyond, beyond. it's like pfft. Good can't luck. just like swap apart, fix it, and get it done. Or fix Especially it. if you're overseas or something, you have to ship your board in. Yeah, so that makes it tricky. So you know, if it, if it does have a thing break on it that we could easily fix, or just swap it out for a new module, super easy. It wouldn't be a big deal because I'd be okay. No big deal. Fifteen minutes. I'll unplug it, slap a new one in. We're back on the road. It's good to go. It's like snapping a skateboard deck, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, it's a bummer, but whatever. I'll just put a new skateboard deck together. I'll just regrip a new deck, throw it on, and fifteen minutes, I'm good to go. Good to go. Yeah. You know? Back at it. You don't got to wait two weeks to two months. Yeah, dude, it's it's really impressive what the community has come up with as far as repairs. Seriously, like the people who know how to repair, like a BMS. So I had Josh Haley. He was at my house uh, a few days ago, actually, um, with Fiction Factory. He's over on the East Coast. He does all the repairs over there. Yep. But I had like a XR BMS just sitting somewhere. He's like, "What's this? Is it work?" I was like, "I don't know. <laughs> it's just from something. I don't remember." Yeah. <laughs> It's a BMS. It I don't know. So he he whipped out my multimeter. He's like, "Hold on, let me check it for you real fast." Like a minute later, he he like checked a few things. He's like, "Replace these two fets, and you'll be fine." <laughs> I was like, "Dude, how awesome. do you know that?" And it's like because him and like other people who have had to completely reverse engineer with no help from anyone, just like, "All right, let's figure out how these things work." Not just no help, but like active, active, <laughs> unhelp. <laughs> <No. Yeah>. Um. <laughs> But now it's at the point where, yeah, you know, there are a lot of smart people out there who, okay, we can fix that for you. Mm -hmm. We know how to find out what the components are. We solder them back on, do all this other stuff, and yep, get her on out. So yeah, I mean, it's impressive. It, was, it is really cool. Yeah, man, and and there's also a lot of really cool guys in the community like yourselves that have created little things and products that have allowed a lot of us riders to really expand our ability to ride in weather that we couldn't or ride features that we couldn't and i would just like to on the behalf of the community thank both of you guys for everything you've done for all of us and for our sport and what you guys are going to continue to do because it's onward and upward from here boys yeah it is well and i wouldn't be creating these um especially my latest you know electronics products and stuff like that. i wouldn't be creating that if there weren't crazy riders like you, <laughs> or like um, my board shutting off when I do this, and it's like when you do what? <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. I'm like, okay, yeah. I, I guess I can look into that for you. So yeah, we kind of you know spur each other on to. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's right, man. No, but I, I think what I like about Robert so much too is the fact that he actually is a writer mm -hmm. that's doing all this creation at the same time too. 100%. Like, mad respect for that. That's yeah. cool. I always like it when it's someone in the community who rides and only really makes stuff for themselves or their friends. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not creating your products to be like, I wonder what's going to sell the best in the community. You're like, I'm solving these problems that I'm having and I'm solving problems that my friends are having. And I can actually ride and test this stuff. That's freaking awesome. Straight up. So, yeah. No, but seriously, I mean, being a rider myself, almost all the stuff I developed is just, I need this. Yeah. So I'm going to make it for myself. 100%. And then, oh, other people want it too. That's cool. Well, it's. It, I heard <laughs> back in the day, entrepreneurship is innovation. It's like you can you can open a, a Mexican restaurant and like you're – you're opening a business cool you can run your own business but like the true entrepreneurship is like finding a problem and solving it finding a gap and creating like the solution for that and like you guys are doing that in its truest form of being like oh okay look like, here's my problem or like oh you're having this problem all right well boom here we go that's how that's how we fix it and then that those those are the the truest things that we ultimately really need. It's not the stuff that we think everyone needs or even we think we need, and then you make it, and then it's like, oh, oh, I guess that this actually isn't really – we don't really need this that bad, and then there's no, like, life to it. You know, whereas, like, bang bumpers 
or float plates. Like float plates were born because you wanted to slide and nudge over curves. I was like a real thing that we needed. And now they've evolved into bang bumpers, but there's still float plates on, on tons and tons of boards around the world. And we've got bang bumpers now. And that's like a integral part of a one wheel is like that. And, um, and I need to get this sensor going from you, dude. It sounds like we'll, that's we'll going to get you hooked up. Seriously, like there's, there's a type of product that comes out of somebody who's motivated by money of like, okay, how can we make money in this community? Like, how can we leverage this and come mm -hmm. up with something that'll sell? Right. And there's another kind of product that comes out of like, I need the best thing for me. That's mm -hmm. going to enhance my experience. It's going to make my ride better. I can't wait to get there, you know? Minor. There's a different kind of motivation there. And yeah. there's like different corners that get cut and there's, there's, and the end result is, it's a huge difference, you know? Like, look at your stuff. The bang bumpers, how long did you spend on those, dude? Too long. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Too long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there must have been a point where you're like, uh, we could give up and try something else or we could yeah, well, I mean, you know, settle for what we have. Yeah, you, you tried to make UHMW bumpers too, right? I didn't right? even try. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even try. No, I did. I mean, I asked people yeah. and they were like, you're going to be in a nightmare for years. You'll never get it to yeah. work. It's frustrating. There's some kinks to work out, but it's dialed now. You know, yeah. So, it is what it is. I I, I feel you. It's the same. Uh, make stuff that you want to ride, and figure it out. I mean, part of your motivation though had to be like, dude, I need I need these bumpers, <laughs> right? That was a hundred percent of the motivation. Yeah. yeah, it's a hundred percent. I was out. We were riding trails in Tahoe, and I knocked off a front float plate on a rock, and I was like, all right. We got to just build bumpers out of better stuff. And bumpers were cracking underneath float plates still. Like, oh, yeah. we had to do something about it. So, yeah, had to get done. Here. Well, hey, Robert, I super appreciate you coming and sitting down and talking with us. I didn't tell him he was going to be on this podcast till about 10 minutes before. So, nice and yeah. nice of you to sit down with us and chat. That's why it's heavily edited. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's lots of cuts. No, but um, I appreciate you, man. I'm so stoked to see, like, you carry on with your journey. Oh, yeah. um, and do more cool stuff. I am excited to ride with you more. We got the opportunity to hang out and ride this last Float Life Fest and go on a night cruise with your gang. Your squad is Yeah, we awesome. had to drag your ass out of that one. Yeah, dude. And then you're like, oh, this is super fun. And we're like, yeah. yeah, bro, the night rides are crazy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, man, I appreciate you coming out. And uh, good luck with your endeavors. Good luck with your rides. Oh, yeah, man, you too. You're the man. Keep it going. you have anything, to, any closing remarks to say to you, the community or your friends or your mom? Um, wow, well, that's quite a list there. Um, no, guys, just keep riding hard, wear your helmets and all that stuff, and, uh, you know, keep having fun, and we're going to be here to support you. Yes, sir. Ride hard, have fun, and float on, my friends. Float on, my friends. Hey. I love you guys. <laughs> Ow.